Hey guys, it's Justin here and we're back in the Summit Racing Studio for our Ford Bronco project. If you missed the introduction video, we're taking a brand new Ford Bronco and building a tribute to legendary off-road racer Rod Hall's 1969 Ford Bronco, the same truck that won the grueling 1969 Mexican 1000 off-road race. Now, we're not building a race car here. Our build is much like the original truck, which was mostly stocked besides a few mild upgrades. This new Bronco still needs to be able to get groceries and haul the family around, but still, you'll be really surprised what a few key modifications can do to transform this new Bronco into a real head turner. We're starting in the usual place with a mild suspension lift, courtesy of the off-road experts over at Superlift. This kit will raise our Bronco about two inches front and back and give us plenty of room to fit some slightly larger wheels and tires. And speaking of wheels and tires, we're going with a set of BF Goodrich All-Terrain TA KO2 tires, and that rubber wraps around a set of retro cool 1552 Patrol HD wheels. We chose these wheels because they're the perfect blend of new modern construction with a slightly retro look. And remember, that's the theme of this entire build. One thing that you should always remember is when changing your wheel and tire size though, you'll probably need to recalibrate your vehicle's speedometer to work with your non-stock wheel and tire combo. The good news is, is that it's really easy to do thanks to the handy calibrator from Hypertech. But that's enough talking about the parts, let's get to work. So we're ready to start our front lift on our Bronco and the first thing we need to do is pull the wheel off. After the wheel's removed, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the sway bar and we're gonna disconnect the sway bar on both sides so we can flip it out of the way. And then once we lift the other side, then we'll go ahead and reconnect it. Go ahead and fold that out of the way. And with our sway bar disconnected, we can go ahead and get our tie rod disconnected. Go ahead and just flip that out of the way. Now, to make our stuff a little bit easier to move around, we're gonna go ahead and remove the brake caliper and the rotor. We're also gonna have to remove this brake line hold and the ABS sensor to fold this thing out of the way. Go ahead and hang that out of the way. And remove our rotor. So with these two upper nuts removed and this back nut loosened, we can go ahead and remove the bottom two strut bolts now. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen these bolts so we can move our bottom A-arm around a little more. But by doing that, we're gonna lose our camber adjustment. So before we loosen them, we're gonna go ahead and mark them with a paint marker so we can put them back to where they were before after we put everything back together. Now, after this lift, this thing's gonna have to go back for an alignment, but this will help us ballpark it a little more. We're gonna do the same thing to the back mount as well. So with that loose, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the upper ball joint. Now we're gonna go ahead and spin this nut off earlier that we left on. To give us a little more range of motion to be able to swing all this stuff out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and pull off the axle nut as well. So these axles are in here pretty tight because they're brand new. So we're gonna grab our trusty air hammer and use a little vibration to walk the axle out. that done, we can go ahead, get our strut down, and remove our strut. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our strut spacer so we can get our strut reinstalled. So it's pretty self-explanatory. We're just gonna take the spacer, slide it on the studs, and then reuse our factory hardware. Now I am gonna put a little Loctite on these just for good measure. With our spacer installed and tight, now we're gonna go ahead and install our new hardware that'll attach to the Bronco. So a good tip is when you're reinstalling your strut, you're actually reinstalling this 180 out from where it originally was. So your bottom stud location is gonna be leaned off. And to fix that and make it a little bit easier to install, we're gonna install it in our bottom control arm here and we're gonna pull out on the strut like this and they'll actually move our studs a little bit in this thing to help it go back together easier. So with that done, 
we go ahead and put our strut into position. Now, you're probably wondering why we're not putting some coilovers or some more extravagant suspension on this thing, but a really cool fact is the original Rod Hall 69 Bronco actually had factory suspension under it and the aspect of components. All they did to change the suspension to get it ready for the Mexican 1000 is put the heaviest spring they could find in it and add an extra shock. So, in the same kind of spirit, we're just simply reusing our factory struts and not getting too crazy with the suspension. So to get our strut in place, we've kind of came up with a little system. We have our jack stand underneath, which is a tube style jack stand, and then our regular floor jack underneath. So I'm gonna move this into place. We're gonna run the jack up, put our strut in place, and then start our bolts. Go ahead and push my strut into place. I have a friend running the jack. I have one bolt started, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw a nut on that. And then we use a small screwdriver to position our other two, because the holes on top of the strut are actually slotted to give you a little wiggle room. So we got all three nuts started, now we're gonna grab a wrench and tighten these up. So we got our axle back into place. Now we're gonna go ahead and get our upper ball joint attached to our knuckle again. We're gonna go ahead and throw our axle nut in, suck our axle in so we can get our knuckle, the top of our knuckle closer to the spring, to get all this stuff lined up. Just checking the back of our axle to see how much space we still have between that and the bearing. And we'll run our nut in some more. Ahead and got our nut started. Now we're gonna tighten that up. Now we can go ahead and tighten up our two bottom strut bolts. Now we just went ahead and snug these up. We'll come back and torque these once everything else is installed. Now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our tie rod. Now go ahead and reinstall your brake rotor and your brake caliper. Now with those tight, we can go ahead and reinstall the ABS sensor and the brake line hold. Now with those installed, we can go ahead and reinstall our sway bar link and then torque everything. Now we're gonna go ahead and start torquing some of our nuts. We're gonna start off here with the upper ball joint nut and we're just gonna torque this back to the manufacturer's spec. Now we're gonna go ahead and torque our brake caliper bolts. So before we torque this one, we're gonna go ahead and realign our paint marks that we made earlier and get our alignment ballparked where it was before. So when this thing goes to the alignment shop, it's not totally off. We're gonna go ahead and torque our lower strut bolts now. And just like that, our front install is done on this side. Go ahead and repeat this process on the other side. Now we're ready to move on to the back. We're ready to start our rear lift installation and we went ahead and already got started, but then re quickly realized that it'd be much easier to do both sides at the same time versus going back and forth from one side to the other. So we're gonna go ahead, rip the wheel off and then lower the whole axle down as a whole to get our other strut out. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and start pulling some of the inner fender well out so it's easier to get to the bolts on the top of the strut. Now with the inner fender well loosened up, we're gonna go ahead and remove the upper strut bolts, but we're gonna leave one on slightly so it'll hold the strut in place while removing some other hardware. Now go ahead and remove the bottom bolt from your strut. So with our bolt removed, now we can go ahead and remove our strut. So now we're ready to install our spacer on our strut and it's pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna go ahead and get started on the studs. And before we slide it all the way down, we're gonna wanna start our nuts so we can get them on. So now we got our strut spacer installed, we're ready to reinstall our strut. So we got one of our top bolts started on our strut and we got our bottom bolt installed. Now what we're gonna do is jump over to the other side and do the same thing. Then after that, we're gonna use our floor jack and put pressure on the axle upward so we can go ahead and get everything in place and aligned and then start putting this thing back together. Now we're ready to install our other two top strut bolts and what we're gonna do to do that is we have a friend operating the floor jack and we're gonna jack up on this and bring the strut into position and then get the bolt started. So a little more. Perfect. And now we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side. So now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our track bar bolt and we're gonna do that by jacking up on the opposite side. So it lifts that side and brings our track bar back into place and then we can put the bolt in. So go ahead and lift that up. Now that we have everything hooked up, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our fender wells and then set this thing and put the wheels and tires on it, set it on the ground, and then go ahead and torque everything. So we have everything installed. Now what we're gonna do is put the wheels and tires on this thing, put it on the ground, and go ahead and torque everything. So we're gonna go ahead and torque our lower strut mount bolts, and we're gonna torque these to the manufacturer's recommended spec. Now we're gonna go ahead and torque the track bar. Now we're gonna go ahead and train our new TPMS sensors with our TPMS sensor tool and the instructions provided by Ford. So let's get to it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the car to the off position, press and release the brake, and then cycle the ignition key three times ending on run. So one, two, three, then we're gonna press and release the brake pedal, turn the ignition to the off position again, and then we're gonna do the run sequence again. So, one, two, three, and ending in the run position, and when the horn sounds, we know we're in program mode. We're gonna start on the front driver's side wheel, take our TPMS tool, hold it next to the sensor, and when the horn beeps, that's how we know it's programmed. Hold it next to our sensor. Now we know this side's done. Now we're gonna move to the back passenger side wheel. The remote, hold the button, hold it next to the sensor, and that one's done. And now our TPMS sensors are programmed. Now if you look on our dash, our screen says training is complete. And that's how we know our TPMS sensors are programmed. Now we're just gonna verify by hitting OK. And we're gonna scroll through our menu here and verify that all our TPMS sensors are reading on the screen. With our lift wheels and tires installed, let's just take a moment to bask in these things' glory. A fun fact is that BF Goodrich actually is the most winning tire in Baja with over 100 wins. 
more wins than the next two tires combined. And we'll just highlight our 1552 wheels here that has a classic design like of the wheels of the era of the Rod Hall Bronco, but with modern black styling. This is just the beginning of our transformation into our Bronco tribute for the Rod Hall Mexican 1000 race truck like in 1969. Make sure to like and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you can see the rest of this Bronco build. I'm Justin with Summit Racing. Thanks for watching.